What if Ariel's best friend wasn't a fish, but a merman instead? Would this change everything? This is a fanfic waiting to happen. Watch until the end to find out whether the little mermaid would have chosen Eric or Flounder as her love. Ariel! Oh, I've missed you! What would Flounder look like as a merman? In fish form, Flounder is beautifully bright and colorful in yellow and blue. So let's take a moment to imagine what he'd look like in merman form. The mermaids and mermen in Ariel's underwater world don't have bright yellow skin, that's for sure. So we'd have to assume that Flounder's yellowness would show up elsewhere on his new merman body. Flounder also has blue stripes across the top of his body. Plus, he has very cool light blue and darker blue stripes running through his tail and fins. Where would those stripes features show up in merman form. We'd love to see him rocking stripy blue hair. But when you look at the other mermen in Atlantica, they all have the color hair of regular humans. The same goes for the mermaids. You see blonde, black, brunette, gray, white, and of course redheads, like Ariel. Of course, Flounder could buck the trend and have blue hair. Regardless of that, his tail is the most likely place where his true colors would show up. That's where the mer people get to show a little individuality. You only need to look at Ariel's sisters to see the rainbow of colors that tails can be. It's easy for you, no one cares what you look like, but I'm not even Move finished. It. As for the rest of him, Flounder as a merman would almost certainly be bare-chested, just like all of the other guys. Would that have been enough to make Ariel see him in a romantic light? Keep watching to find out. What would Flounder act like as a merman? So we've all got a picture in our heads of Flounder as a merman now, right? Let's start considering what he'd be like as a merman. And that involves analyzing his personality as a fish. Because as we're all taught from kindergarten, it's what's on the inside that counts. And Flounder would surely have the same character traits whatever form his body took. One of the most striking things about Flounder is his unfailing loyalty. He sticks by Ariel no matter what. He supports her unconditionally in every decision, even when nobody else does. Like her obsession with the human world and her desire to have legs. Flounder sticks by Ariel both literally and metaphorically. When they're exploring the shipwreck and that scary shark attacks, he looks out for Ariel like she looks out for him. He also speaks up on her behalf to King Triton and that shows bravery. But it wasn't her fault. Uh However, Flounder is certainly presented as being a bit nervous, panicky, and scaring easily. That's why it's so striking when he doesn't hesitate in coming through for Ariel. It shows just how much he loves her. And Flounder is definitely in touch with his feelings. He's sensitive and is comfortable enough to shed a tear when he feels emotional. Surely these are all qualities that a mermaid would look for in a modern merman. Are you wondering if Ariel would have fallen in love with Flounder if he were a merman? Us too! Stay tuned as we've got a theory on that coming up. What do we learn about Flounder in the sequels? Ariel and Flounder's relationship in The Little Mermaid is just the tip of the iceberg, as Flounder appears in the two sequels too. He has a small part in The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, but he's still close with Ariel. He's at the celebration for the birth of Ariel's daughter, Melody. Although they're apart for 12 years, given that Ariel lives on land, they become allies again. They're reunited so that Flounder can help her search for Melody. This time, we get to see him all grown up, an adult, and a father no less, with five kids. In this sequel, he's braver than in the original movie. This gives us a really interesting insight into what Flounder would be like as an adult merman. In the third movie, The Little Mermaid 3, Ariel's Beginning, we skip back to when Ariel and Flounder were younger. Again, he's not such a scaredy cat in this film. He's more carefree and adventurous than in The Little Mermaid movie. And we get a fascinating glimpse at Flounder's main passions in life. He adores music. He's always beatboxing and humming. Even though it gets him in trouble as King Triton has banned music, we see him working as a waiter at the Catfish Club, but his big dream is being a part of the Catfish Club band. This gives even more of a clue that they'd be super close if he were a merman. Shared interests and passions are a great basis for a successful relationship after all. How would Ariel and Flounder's relationship change if he were a merman? One thing's for sure, Ariel and Flounder are BFFs. When she's a mermaid and he's a fish, they're together all the time. So there's no reason to think their close bond would be any weaker if Flounder were a merman. They're partners in crime, exploring the ocean together. And they share a fascination with human things. One of the things we need to consider is the difference between two scenarios. What if Flounder had always been a merman? Or what if he got changed into one? If he'd been a merman for the entirety of the Little Mermaid movie, it could have been 
been an interesting plot change. Rather than Flounder supporting Ariel in her pursuit of Prince Eric, he might have been jealous. And the story could have revolved around his attempts to show Ariel how wonderful their underwater world is after all. The other possibility is that he got turned from a fish to a merman, and that could have gotten really interesting. His transformation could have resulted in Ariel seeing Flounder in a whole new light. The storyline might have developed about Ariel's internal struggle. Who would she choose, Flounder or Eric? Either way, we reckon the movie would have ended up being about a love triangle. Let's list all the reasons why Flounder would have won her heart. Reasons why Ariel would fall in love with Flounder as a merman. Ariel would never have looked at Flounder in a romantic way as a fish, so the most their relationship could have ever been was friendship. But switch Flounder into a merman and everything changes. We've already seen how fond she is of him as a fish. She comforts him. She's patient with him. She's protective over him. Ariel even risks her own life to help him. Like when the shark is chasing them through the shipwreck. They even have their own little in-jokes and stock phrases. Like the many times Ariel says to him in a joking way, Flounder, don't be such a guppy. Oh, guppy. It takes years to build up that kind of relationship. It's a classic plotline in movies and in real life. You fall in love with your best friend. Eventually you realize what was right underneath your nose the whole time. So that storyline could play out for Ariel and Flounder. If he were a merman. It works both for if he'd always been a merman or if he'd got changed into one. Perhaps the story could go that he saved Ariel from danger. And as he held her in his arms, she had an epiphany. This was the merman she loved. However, there are reasons why it might not pan out like that reasons why Ariel would not fall in love with Merman Flounder. In the Little Mermaid movie, Flounder's voice sounds quite a bit younger than Ariel's. Regardless of any actual age gap, as a fish, Flounder comes across as pretty young. So it's not surprising that we kind of get the feeling that Ariel looks at Flounder like a little brother. Ariel, Flounder, will you relax? Nothing is going to happen. And that is certainly not conducive to developing romantic feelings towards someone. Even if Flounder were a merman, their relationship might well be just as platonic as it is when he's a different species. We're hearing shouts of agreement from everyone who thinks Ariel and Flounder are like brother and sister, at least in Ariel's eyes anyway. But what about from Flounder's point of view? His deep love for Ariel doesn't come across as romantic or as brotherly. It just looks like pure love. And so from his point of view, we reckon there's not much doubt that Flounder as a merman would want a loving relationship with Ariel. The thought of her rejecting him breaks our hearts, but perhaps there's a way that he would trump Prince Eric. And that's if Flounder became a human instead. What if Flounder was human? We can't help but feel that Ariel loves the impossible. She wants what she can't have. And like so many of us, she finds something seriously appealing when it's out of the ordinary or forbidden. It could be that she falls in love with Prince Eric straight away simply because he's the first human she's ever seen close up. It could be his humanness that is what she's attracted to. I've never seen a human this close before. Rather than it being Prince Eric himself that she finds irresistible. If that were the case, then what if Flounder became human. Let's figure out how this would work. Whether he started out as a fish or a merman, there are a couple of ways that Flounder could be turned into a human. The first way is the less appealing, and that's the same way that Ariel originally got her legs, by signing a contract with Ursula the Sea Witch. What do you think she would have wanted from Flounder in return? Let us know in the comments. The second way would be how Ariel eventually got her human legs, and that's King Triton using his magic in his trident to transform merpeople into human people. What do you think would have happened if Flounder were human? Would Ariel have fallen for him, or would Prince Eric still have stolen her heart? What if Prince Eric was a merman? Our final imaginary transformation is for Prince Eric. We've been setting up Flounder and Eric as love rivals, so as we've gone through the options with Flounder as a merman and a human, it's only fair to do the same for Eric. What would have happened if Eric were a merman? This really puts Ariel's love to the test, and it questions what it is that she truly finds so appealing about Eric. Is it his essence, his personality, who he is deep inside, or is it his legs? Did Eric win Ariel's affection the moment she saw him become 
because he was a human? A very handsome one, sure, and that would have helped. But is it his very humanness that holds the main draw? As a merman, Prince Eric would have the same face, hair, and torso as his human self. But in place of his legs, there would be a tail. That's not such a leap for our imaginations to make as the switch in flounder from fish to merman. Given that Eric tends to wear blue trousers and a red sash, we can imagine his tail would be along the same lines in terms of color. He'd be just as handsome, maybe even more so, given that mermen are bare-chested. But would Ariel still feel that strong pull towards him? He loves me. <laughs> I knew it! We don't think so. Flounder versus Eric. Who would Ariel choose? So now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. Would Ariel have chosen Merman Flounder over Human Eric? We know you'll want to defend your favorite character, and it certainly is a close call. But all in all, we think it wouldn't have made any difference if Flounder had been a merman. Sure, he might have fallen in love with Ariel in a romantic way, but she really only has eyes for Prince Eric. Even if Flounder had transformed into a human, she still would have seen him in the same light. Whereas Prince Eric was new, different, exciting, and had only ever been a love interest. He'd never been a comfortable friend or a brotherly figure like Flounder was. Before you go, let us know in the comments below if you agree with us and sound off with your theories on how The Little Mermaid would have been a different movie if Flounder had been a merman. And that's it. Please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to The Things. Thanks for watching.